Long Beach has always been known to have a cool, laid-back vibe. We're a town in L.A. County, nestled in the South Bay. We love our women, we love our weed, and we love our weather. When it comes to hip-hop, no one, and I mean no one, epitomizes, represents, shows the true laid back nature of long beach better than nate dog the hook king no one has laid down more classic hooks than the one and only nate dog r.i.p i spent the first years of my life living in long beach i was born at saint mary's hospital right there on atlantic I grew up on the east side, 21st Street to be exact, 21st and Long Beach Boulevard. 326 East, 21st Street, apartment four. Still there. I pass by often. Still looks the same. Every time I pass by, it brings back great memories of growing up in the city of Long Beach. And when I heard someone say Long Beach on a record for the first time, when Snoop did it, I was ecstatic. I was excited. I, I didn't think anyone knew about my city, my town of Long Beach. I mean, I had heard Compton on record. I had heard South Central on record. I had obviously heard New York City on record. But I had never heard someone yell out my city on an album on a song not only that snoop was standing on top of the vip records i knew where v i know where vip is at this time when this is coming out i'm like oh shit that's right there on martin luther king i know exactly where that is vip records so to see this back in the day it was dope and i do believe the first time i heard nate dog was on snoop's debut album doggy style Apparently, he debuted on the Chronic album, which came out a little bit before that. But off top of my head, I can't remember what song or songs he was on on the Chronic album. But I do remember the first time I heard him on Snoop's album. This melodic voice, this sing-songy voice. Speaking of Snoop's album, to this day, I can't think of a bigger anticipation for a hip-hop album than Snoop's album. I legit can't think of any other album in my lifetime that the world was waiting to hear more than Snoop's debut album. I remember like it was yesterday and I was one of those people that could not wait to get my hands on this album because I had already heard what Snoop could do on the Chronic album. This melodic one, two, three into the foe. Snoop Doggy Dog and Dr. Dre is at the dough. Ready to catch and trip. So step on up. I mean, I was like, I had never heard anybody that smooth in my life at that time. And not only that, he had bars. He was on the Chronic album, barring it out. He was dropping bars on the Chronic album. And he represented Long Beach. So I could not wait for the doggy style album to come out so it comes out and i remember i remember studying that album like i had never studied an album before not even the chronic album not even easy e who i loved at that time i loved nwa i loved all that but i didn't study an album as much as i studied doggy style at that time what i mean by study is i i read every linear notes on the on the you know back in the day when you got a tape you know it wasn't a stream so you actually had something physical you actually had something in your hand you had a tape and i remember the album cover and and looking at it the artwork by joe cool i was like this is amazing i mean back then i was like it's so cool looking back now it was just subpar and, and I, I mean that with all respect, artwork, but it was amazing back then to someone who loved hip hop and just wanted to know a story. You guys remember, if you're my age, you remember the cover on Snoop's album. Doghouse, there's a dog catcher there trying to catch Snoop. 
the dog. They're, everything's dog related. It's a cartoon. Shout out to Joe Cool. I'm trying to get him on my show because I, I, I'm very interested to hear his story. Joe Cool is the one who did all the art for the early Death Row releases. Most famously, Snoop's debut release. But one of, if not the most famous songs on that album, and to this day, to this day, it's played everywhere. It's played every, I was just at a bar slash club recently and someone played it on the jukebox. Ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. And in comes this person, Nate Dog. Who has the verse that I think everybody recites to this day. When I met you last night, baby. Sing it. Before you opened up your gap. We all know this. Come on. Uh. I had respect for you, lady. But now I take it all back. Uh-huh. That's right. Because you gave me all your whoopsie. What? And you even licked my balls. Leave your number on the cabinet. And I promise, baby. Come on, we all know that song. Cause I have never met a girl. So I'm listening to this, right? Like, wow. So take yourself back to 92, 93. There weren't... Now singing and rapping is like everybody's doing it. Everybody's copying Drake. You know, Drake was singing, rapping, like Young Thug sings and right. Like everybody's doing the singing and rapping thing now. But back in 1992, 93, it wasn't happening. Hip hardcore hip hop and rap and West Coast gangster rap. There was no singing. But here comes Nate Dog, man, that put a funky ass style over a West Coast beat. And here we are. Ain't no fun. If the homies can't have none. Classic song. And I'm going to I'm going to say that's when the world got the best taste of Nate Dogg and realized, OK, I think we have something here. I think we have something here. So, yes, I, I that was the first time I ever I would say legit heard of Nate Dogg. Because apparently he was on the Chronic album. I don't remember that whatsoever. But Nate Dogg, Snoop, and Warren G had a group called 213. And 213 represents, it's not just a number to us. It's, it's a movement. Because at one point in time, 213 represented all of Southern California. Whether you was in Orange County, San Gabriel Valley, you know, Long Beach, Compton, it was all 213, so it's a movement, you know what I'm saying? It's basically saying that Southern California is on the move again, and we the frontier movement, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to be our front to make it happen for everybody else. And later on in Nate's career, they actually released an album, their first album, 213, and that is a dope album. If you haven't checked out the 213 album with Snoop, Nate Dogg, and Warren G., came out maybe about 15 years ago if i could just off the top of my head maybe 15 uh, oh no nate's been gone for almost 15 so yeah it had to be about fuck or maybe almost 20 i don't know long story short shit came out and it's a great album especially in the summertime i'm just pumping that up we'll talk about 213 later but right now we're talking about the 213 the group i mean we make hit records together we got a chemistry that you know to where we make hit records and snoop is able to do his own thing now, call his own shots. Nate is able to call his own shots, and I'm able to call my own shots, and we're not dealing with no more record companies telling us that we can't do our record together, so now we can finally do it. They had a group, and they were all doing their thing, and apparently there was an underground tape that was floating around of all three of them. I would love to get my hands on this. Warren G always believed in 213 more than anybody. Like, he believed in the whole situation before we got a deal anyway. So, you know, we had to see what he was seeing. Once I went around the world as far as doing shows and touring, and people got to ask me, what's up with 213? What's up with the 213 album? Then I started to feel what he was saying. So, you know, when we got back to the pad, we was like, we ain't doing nothing. We might as well go in the studio. You know what I'm saying? We did it at my house, so it could feel like 213 supposed to feel. We didn't really go get a lot of big name, $100,000 producers. We, we, we stayed in house. We wanted to make this record something that 
could represent what we was going through. We were struggling at the time, and that's what the record re represents. But Nate Dogg apparently sang at church, and he's always been into R&B and that style while everyone else wanted to be rappers. I think we started as solo artists. I think that kind of helped us because um, most people, they start as a group and then you start getting people in your ear. Oh, you know, you bigger than this one and you need more money than this one. And then you start creating a rift and eventually that's going to come to a head. So I think we earned who we are, our own names as solo artists. Now, when we come at, together as 213, that we know what we bring to the table. So we don't run into those problems. He dropped out of high school and he he enlisted into the Marines which I think is pretty dope. Uh, but he was discharged. And he said that what I found was interesting. He said that the reason why he joined the military was because he wanted to see if he was a man. I always thought that was very interesting. And, and, and shout out to all of the people who serve our country. Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force. And not only that, but police, firefighters, ambulance workers, all the way down to like all that, nurses, everything. Like, thank you for your service. I just want to take this time and I want to thank Nate Dogg for his service, his brief service to the military. But he came in on that song. Ain't no fun at the homies can't have none. And there was really no looking back for Nate Dog. Everyone wanted a piece of Nate Dog. At first, he was really just doing music on death row. He was on a lot of classic, classic death row songs. But there was a time in the early uh, 2000s, maybe. Something where every song had a Nate Dogg hook. There was a time where Nate Dogg was on almost every song. I mean, he's done songs with 50 Cent, Eminem, Most Def, Eric Sermon, Red Man. I mean, the list literally goes on and on. Some of my favorite Nate Dogg hooks. Hey, 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 hey. Smoke weed every day. I mean, whenever that's played in a in a club, right? We everybody sings that hook. It's those little things. I would have loved to be in the studio with Nate Dogg and Dr. Dre recording the last episode or the next episode. Well, you know, as you know, Dre put me gave me my first record deal, so um Working with Dre from the first day is always a learning experience. He always teaches me something new when I'm in there, you know. Even to this day, it's always something like, damn, he could have told me that 10 years ago. You know, so it's, it's always a learning experience when it comes to Dre. Man, what a classic time that must have been just to be a fly on the wall. Nate Dogg, say it like this. Hey, 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 hey. Smoke weed every day. Classic, right? I mean, 50 Cent, 21 Questions, one of me and my girl's favorite joints. We bumped that when we got our little, we got our little mixtape uh, playlist that we bump on date nights and stuff like that. And 21 Questions on Get Rich or Die Trying by 50 Cent. I'll ask you 21 questions and they're all about us, all about us. I mean, come on. Two of America's Most Wanted. Nobody. Does it better? I can't sing like Nate Dogg, sorry. Nobody does it better. They could come closer than close. Yeah. Come on. Original, they never will be. Shout out to Nate Dogg, man. Music and me. My music and me. Come on. You kidding me? He even had a song with, uh, man, I can't think of it off the top of my head, but it was with um, Eric Sermon, man. Let me see if I can look that up while I'm talking. But so many songs. These days you gotta be strapped. I'm already knowing ain't nobody got my back. These days you gotta be down. 
who said it was easy claiming dog pound. Come on, guys. Dude. Probably my favorite Nate Dog song, just song by him. You know, regular, nobody, not featuring. You know, my, my, my favorite Nate Dog song will probably have to be Never Leave Me Alone. Never leave me alone. They tell me that temptation. Ooh, it's very hard to resist. Sing along if you know the song. Tell me that you want me. I try to hide my feelings. COGs ain't supposed to feel like this. You can call it what you want to, want to. But I don't. All right, I'm done. I'm pro- sorry, guys. I'm going to be singing throughout this month podcast. So if you don't like it now, you can bounce. You don't subscribe or whatever the case is. But if you're a homie and you love what you hear, shit, sing along with me. Because Nate Dog makes you just want to sing, man. Come on. Right? Nate Dog is the man, dude. Shout out to Nate Dog. Gone way too soon. He passed away in 2011. We're actually coming up on the anniversary of his passing. How much did it hurt when they dog passed so young? Man, that hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Because I went to see him before he died. And how he was looking, it just, you know, made me get myself together. You know what I'm saying? Really, really sucks. What's your favorite Nate Dog song? Comment down below. I would love to know what is your favorite Nate Dog song. Or what's, what's your favorite song that Nate Dog is featured on? Now, apparently, Nate Dogg was none to be messed with either. He was he was known to back himself up if he needed to. I was talking to someone uh, not too long ago, and they were telling me how Nate Dogg was really the most gangster one out of the crew. Right? He was known to be a good soldier, especially during the Ruthless Records, Death Row, Beef, melee those few years where they were beefing going back and forth on record well that spilled into the streets ladies and gentlemen all that spilled right into the streets and there were times where death row camps and ruthless camps just so happened just so happened to be in the same spot there's a big famous one where there was a an event at a golf course and there's video all over youtube you can check it out i don't want to play it because of copyright issues but there is melee and i think method man is even in the video because method man was there for some reason but in the background you see death row dudes swinging golf clubs at ruthless dudes ruthless dudes picking up golf carts and throwing them at death row dudes and according to everybody who was there it was pretty crazy but according to everyone there what they all can agree on is that nate dog was holding his own and nate dog was being a great soldier i guess there was an there was an altercation that happened on a golf course yeah Mm -hmm. you actually got hit right with Mm -hmm. a, a golf club yeah but by who nate dog nate dog yeah okay How bad was that situation? It was horrible. Yeah? Yeah. But where'd you get hit? My head, my hand, my hand was broke. Ah, what a time. In the future, I'm going to do a episode on the Ruthless Records, Death Row Beef. I'm going to do a whole show on that. Play some clips and stuff like that. So make sure you stay tuned to Dusty Vision Radio. Every Saturday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I can't play music anymore, unfortunately, because YouTube was just getting look it's really rough to navigate through this youtube arena and i'm trying to respect all of their rules and all of their wishes and things like that and sometimes it's hard and sometimes they nag you but one thing i can be sure of is that the music i was playing was really starting to mess up my show especially if the music belongs to someone else and i just don't want them to get i don't want to give them any more reason to mess with me trying to hang out with you guys man and not only that guys i'm trying to make a little bit of money on this there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes of this youtube stuff it ain't just oh just i'm recording now now everything's done and no dog there's a lot of work that goes into 
posting editing promoting i mean all this stuff calling people to be on your show looking up all the information like there's a lot of stuff that goes into it and i'm not i'm not complaining i love like i really love this i really love this but you know what i love to get paid for it i can't even lie even if it's just a little bit i appreciate getting paid something so there is a little dollar sign right there that you will see in the chat you could send me a super chat. You can even send me a super thanks later. But just know that each dollar that you send is truly appreciated. And it gives me more encouragement to keep this thing a moving. That being said, hit that like button if you like what you hear. If this is your first time joining the channel and you enjoy my content, please hit that subscribe button. Check out some of my older videos. Check out some of my older stuff on hip hop. Check out some of my older stuff on prison life. Check out some of my older stuff on gangs. I think you will have something here that you will like. But back to Nate Dog, man. Uh, that guy. Nate Dog brought so much joy when it comes to music. Like he's on he's on hundreds of songs. Hundreds of songs from everybody like I, I i couldn't even go over all the nate dog songs all the classics <laughs> excuse me just had to relight my joint you guys smoking something out there let me know what you puffing on i am puffing on let me grab my what am i puffing on this is some push pop it's a really good indica Something really nice to keep the vibe low, chill. I got my drinky drink right here. I'm sipping a little vodka and soda. I'm trying to keep the calories down a little bit, so I'm just drinking vodka and club soda. Ah, take a little sip. Ah. But seriously, man, thank you guys for checking out the show. I really enjoy hanging out with you. I really do, man, and I want to keep this going. So, you know, just please... Tell a friend about my show and spread the word as much as you can. In 2011, we lost Nate Dog, And I was sad. That was one of the deaths that hit me. That's one of the deaths that hit me. And he was very young. I mean, let's see. 21 plus 11 is 32. He was only 30. Wait, was he only 32? Hold on. No, 31, 42. That's still young as hell. 42 years old. And if I had to guess, it was health reasons. Apparently, he suffered from a stroke. His body's left side was weakened. He suffered another stroke. And then on March 15th, 2011, he passed away in Long Beach of complications of congestive heart failure. Now, I don't know what if Nate Dogg was doing anything that attributed to this. So this next comment has nothing to do with Nate Dogg's passing because I don't know the true history or of what he was doing. If he was a big alcoholic, if he was smoking, if he was doing drugs, if he was eating bad. I don't know any of that. But one can assume. And I'm going to assume that he wasn't really taking care of his body like he, we should be doing. And that comes from a guy who's smoking and drinking right now as we're speaking. But guys, ladies, anyone listening, you got to drink water. And, and, and you can't just, you can't smoke and drink all day. You got to get to it. You know, I, I smoke a joint a day. I'll sip a little something. But all these things that you're ingesting into your body. And once again, I'm not saying this has anything to do with Nate Dog passing. I'm not saying that. Respectfully, I'm not saying that. But 41, 42, that's really young. Guys, drink some water. Don't just drink juices. And don't just drink beer sodas drink a lot of water throughout the day water water is the lifeblood 
Stop eating a lot of processed foods. Look, if you don't want to hear this, you can tune out right now because we're not going to talk too much more about Nate Dog. We're going to talk more about health. Health in our community because right now we are messed up, people. We are passing at way too young of age. And it's things that we can control. Stop all the processed foods. Stop the jack in the box at three in the morning. Just stop it. Eat more organic foods. Our grandparents lived to be 85, 90. Some grandparents, 85, 90. They, they've been eating organic shit all their life. They're not trying to eat none of this bullshit, this crap. And yes, there are people who can smoke every day and drink every day and still live to be 90 years old. Yes, I get it. That, But we're talking reality here. We're talking, for the most part, if you live a life like that, you're going to... It's going to end for you really quick. In 41 years, that comes really fast, guys. I'm, on, I'm, I mean, I'm in my mid to late 40s, man. That comes really fast. Kind of like I do when I haven't had sex with my wife in a few days. All right. Bad time for joking. But seriously, 41 years comes fast. Did I just say comes fast again? Oh, my God. All right. 20, uh, 41 years gets here really quick. Is that better? Is that better? We good? Okay. It does, guys. So take care of your bodies. Yes, it's okay to indulge in things every once in a while, but don't let that be the only thing your body is introduced to. Okay? Seriously. RIP Nate Dog, and shout out to everybody out there. Legit, love you guys so much. Shout out to the chat fam. Shout out to the people that donated. Shout out to the people that are going to donate in the future. Because look, I don't really, I was never one of those guys that beg for money on YouTube and all that. But every once in a while, I'm going to ask you to kindly give from your heart. There are a few of you out there. Shout out OG Steve. Shout out Marlon. Shout out Richard. Shout out, I mean, there's, there's, there's several others who always give. I'm not talking about you guys. You guys have given way more, way more. I'm talking about the newcomers. I'm talking about the people who just pop in to see what I'm talking about. Feel free to shoot me just a few bucks every once in a while. It's highly appreciated. All right. I'm out this. You guys be safe. Have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you are listening to the sound of my voice. And may the best of your todays be the worst of your tomorrows. School is in session, baby, but I don't play. I know you wanted to go uh -huh. to recess, but I take, take that, that away. What? Understand I'm the what? man, even if you had a plan. If you make 200,000, I'm keeping 100 grand. Wait a minute. Uh, because I'm pimping you, bitch. This is America, so why not get rich? When you're searching for your music, you're playing my station. I'm two steps beyond, maybe that's the fascination. Come on. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling Absolute, we put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh. I'm a West Coast rapper from the city of the hub. Everywhere I go, I get that California love. Like I'm the plug, they trying to tap into my energy. When I hit the spot, you know I'm coming with that synergy, replenishing like Gatorade. Got they levels up, and now we two steps beyond these flames, kicking up dust, never running from the smoke. Hold up, we really want the smoke only from Clone God, though. Let's go. One plus one equals two. I'm Talking you and me, you talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, I'm a Gemini, bitch, so you know what that means. It means that sometime one plus one equals three. I'm a wandering star with two grams up in my cigar and a heart with two scars. So pardon if I snap, girl, I'm sorry. Bitch, pass me the lighter. I'm about to play Street Fighter. Hot Dugan, that pussy. Like my name, Ken Ryu. She says she never kissed a girl. Well, bitch, tonight you experiment. Put this tablet on. On your tongue and just enjoy the experience. One plus one equals two. I'm talking you and me. You talking me and you. When we come together, we be feeling absolute. We put one in the air and be feeling so cool. Ooh, ooh.